The earthquakes are continuing in the depth of the 5 to 7 kilometers and sometimes deeper. In the Reconis Peninsula, we see three centers of the tremors. One in the Swartzengi, the other one is in the Fegedesval area, and the other one is the Krisovic area. These are the volcanic systems, each one of them, which are uh, active at this state tectonically. We have earthquakes and tremors. This means that uh, there is movements of the rocks along the fault lines that we have there. Eurasia and the uh, North America are pulling apart this area. You can see that the marking of the land by these uh, earthquakes is a boundary of the plates. We have, due to this uh, movement and creation of a space, the rising of the mantle, partial melting of it, and addition and creation of the magma, and addition of it into the within the earth crust. And that magma rising rises the land. We can measure that by GPS measurements, the distance between the surface and the satellites which are in orbit. So for each eruption, we have this level of the rising of the land being bigger than the previous one. And this is a pattern we are expecting to be valid in this time. Based on this model of the GPS uh, data, we can actually calculate the volume of the magma underneath within the Earth crust. And these are the measurements that we have for the several of them. And this is the accumulated one. In the previous eruption, we had uh, around uh, 24 million cubic meters of the magma. That's the unit you can see there. Of course, the measurement is GPS data. And based on that, we have uh, ex uh, at this stage, we have 14 cubic uh, million cubic meters. That is around 42 megaton, we can say 40 megaton density of 3 or 2.8 for the basaltic magma. Uh, we can uh, calculate the volume and the weight. So the difference is uh, significant, 10 million cubic meters around, uh, we can say, uh, yeah, 30 um, megaton. It needs shaking, of course. We need shaking it like a ketchup. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. So it needs a lot of earthquakes to actually rise it and make it fluid. So the earthquakes that we see when before the eruption happening and within 30 seconds or one and a half hour, we see that the magma starts to bubble up and then flow. And the flow of the magma from the sourcing reservoir to the weakest point, which is in the Grindavik Rift Valley, takes at least 30 seconds. It can be more, one and a half, up to two hours to rise to the level of the ground. Then we have eruption. Surprisingly, during this period, we have a contraction. When the magma arrives, it just expands. The land expands. Based on this, uh, I expect that uh, by the uh, November to November 17, we will have an eruption. Of course, by the first uh, day of the November, it may pass the threshold of the um, previous eruption, which was quite, uh, quite uh, significant in that sense. And uh, at this stage, the risk assessment stays the same. Uh, means there is no danger of the... Uh, eruption at this stage or gas pollution but there is a danger of falling into holes and the crevices that exist due to the earthquake activity and uh, of course the town of the green of is open and we will uh, reassess the situation later in the month